Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. So today we're going to be going over some chi-squared practice problems. So the chi-squared test is a very important test used in genetics to determine if you can compare the expected results to the observed results. So we've done these Punnett squares and we've said it has a three to one ratio. Okay, cool. But what if we actually do that cross between let's say those pea plants and we look at the results of the progeny and we count them and compare them to the three to one ratio. How do we know if it's accurate saying that three to one ratio or it's not accurate? We do this test called a chi-square test and I'm gonna show a little, a couple examples here today of going over them. And they are you know, typical things you could see on an exam too. All right, so like I said, like I've done in the other ones, I recommend pausing when you see the questions and trying to finish them yourself before you watch me complete them. I'm then just here for extra support. So here we're going to be doing uh, two questions. So this one's in three parts. So you just manage this colony that made up this thing called nitflits. Um, and then here, question C down here, you write your conclusion of the chi-squared test. And then also question two, there's a separate colony. We're going to do similar question as well. And then here is your, well, are your uh, critical values for chi-squared. So we're going to talk about this and reading the table once we get our answers, but then we have this as our you know, support as well. All right, let's start this now and start working through the first pro problem. So here you manage a colony of nitflits in your lab. One day you discover a mutant nitflit that is behaving differently than the others. It flies in a wave-like pattern and you're like, whoa, that's neat. And so that differs from normal straight flight pattern. You breed this mutant with a wild type true breeding nitflit. So you then interbreed the two F1s to produce an F2 generation and count 741 and 259. So 741 wild types and 259 mutants. So which allele do you think is the dominant one? So here, the wild type is the dominant. So you know that because of the numbers that appear here. So a lot more wild types, so it's the dominant one. Uh, so, based on your hypothesis, perform a chi-squared analysis to determine if your F2 results match your expected results. So what are our expected results? We have to figure that out first. So we know our observed, what's our expected? You can't just guess a ratio based on those two numbers. You actually have to look at, you know, the cross. So we here, I'll write the notes. So we need to determine expected. And we do this by first looking at the parent cross we did. So parent cross was what? They were two true breeders. Uh, so a, a true breeding wild type with a true breeding nitflit. So here, you know, let's just use F um, for flying. So straight flying, the true breeding wild type was F plus F plus uh, cross the recessive form. So there's your parent cross. In here, you know, this you can do this monohybrid in your head by now, hopefully. So here, all F1 were heterozygotes. So then you do the F1 to F2 cross. And so you do a heterozygote cross right there. So that's an, you know, F plus. So that would be your cross you're doing for the F1 to F2. So you're thinking you've done this monohybrid many times before. You remember this is the three to one. So three wild type. and one mutant. So that's your three to one ratio. Remember a three to one ratio also means three fourths to one fourth. So three fourths of them will be wild type. Um, one fourth would be mutant if we're looking at it in terms of fractions. So now what? Okay, we have, these are what we expect. We expect three quarters of the total. So now what is our total here? Uh, so here we want to find n. So n is the total number of progeny. So you take 741. So you, this is where you lose, use your expected. You take 741 plus 259, which I conveniently made equal to 1,000. So 1,000 is the total number. So how do we know what we expect? If I say we have 1,000 progeny, 
at a three to one ratio, what do we expect? So you can use this. So here for wild type, for expected, I'll write a little E down there. You take three quarters times 1,000, which equals 750. And then mutant expected is equal to one fourth times 1,000 which is equal to 250. So this is what we expected the results to be. So 750 wild type, here we got 741, and now 250 mutant, but we got 259. So are these differences due to chance? Or is something else at play and they're not due to chance and our you know, three to one ratio was an incorrect hypothesis? This is what we use the chi-squared for. Uh, so remember, chi-squared is equal to the sum of all the possibilities, so the sum of the wild type plus the sum of the mutant, and then the equation is observed minus expected squared over expected. So if we write this out now, the first one, we'd be looking at the wild type. So observed wild type, remember, is 741 minus expected 750. All of that squared over the expected 750, summing then the next one, that's what the summation sign me means, the mutant form. So the mutant form is 259 minus expected 250 squared over 250. Make note here, 741 minus 750 is a negative number, but it's okay because you are squaring it and that makes it positive. So then uh, you do this calculation and then you get your final answer as 0.432. That's your chi-squared value. Great, now what does that mean? Huh. So when you read these this chi-squared chart down here, you have to first calculate the degrees of freedom in order to read this chart. So let's do that. So what are degrees of freedom do we have here? So degrees of freedom are DF. Remember degrees of freedom are equal to the number of outcomes, number of outcomes minus one. So in this case, the number of outcomes are two, two different outcomes. So two minus one is equal to one. So degrees of freedom of equal to one. Our chi squared is 0.32. Let's go back to the table down here. So we're looking at degrees of freedom of one, chi squared of 0.32. So that is in this region right here between 0 0.016 and 0.455. So that means there's a 50 to 90% remember this, these are technically fractions of the probability, 50 to 90% chance. So what is the conclusion here? 50 to 90% chance that the differences are due to chance. And this is good. That's a good thing. You want the differences to be due to chance. You don't want it to be because your ratio was incorrect. So if we got a chi-squared value of, you know, 20, that's a high percent, like a low percent chance that the difference is due to chance. You want the difference to, do, to be due to random chance. All right, so that's problem number one. Let's go to problem number two. So in a separate colony of Nitflits, you discover a mutant nitflit that is missing an unusual abdominal stripes on, found on the wild type ones. You breed this mutant with a wild type, true breeding one. You then interbreed two F1s. So same thing as before, produce the F2 generation and count 511 and 489. Perform a chi-squared analysis to determine if your F2 results match expected results, assuming that the abdominal stripe pattern is inherited in a simple Mendelian manner and that the mutant allele is recessive. So here I'm telling you like what you thought about this process to begin with. So same thing as before. I, I don't need to uh, write it all out again. You do the parent cross, two true breeders. You have the F1 generation, which are heterozygotes. And then you make the F2 generation out of those heterozygotes. And this is all monohybrid. So this is still a monohybrid cross, and we still still are looking at that three to one ratio. So that three to one ratio is important. Uh, so here, if we are doing this math again, first we calculate the total number. So 511 plus 489. 
511 plus 489 is 1,000 again because, yay, I'm nice. Uh, so next up here, um, I might need to get my calculator out. So next up here, we want to figure out, remember, observed versus expected. So if we have a 1,000, so we did this calculation before, wild type expected is equal to 750. Mutant expected is equal to 250. If we have this three to one ratio again, which is, if we're talking about the mutant allele being recessive, that's what we're assuming is happening here. So we now do the chi-squared analysis again. Uh, so chi-squared, I'll write out the equation again, is equal to, you know, observed minus expected squared over expected, and it's a summation of all the possibilities. So for this, it's just one or the other. Uh, so I'll write out the equation real quick. Okay, so here is the chi-squared equation. So 511 observed, but we expected 750. So here we see a big difference. And the purpose of me doing this example problem is to show you what it could look like when it doesn't match. Um, so here would be the, the uh, uh, wild type part, and then this is the mutant type over here. So 489 are what we observed expecting 250. So if we do this calculation here, what does it equal? So here, I just did the calculation quick. Um, and one thing I wanted to note here is also this was supposed to be 250, not 750. Uh, so I made that change there. Also, if you do this, you notice the chi-squared is a very large number, 304.6. <laughs> so, I mean, look at these differences. Uh, we you know, expected 750, but we only got 511. Here we expected 250 and we got 489. Those are pretty far off. So the farther they're off, the higher this chi-squared value is going to be. So a chi-squared of 304.6, what is your conclusion based on the finding? So here, degrees of freedom, two, prob two chances. So degrees of freedom is two minus one again, which equals one. So if we look down at this chart here, it's not even on it. So, you know, 7.89.005, which is a 0.5% chance that the difference is due to, you know, random chance, which is a very low one anyway. So, so here the difference is not due to chance. So what does that suggest? So that suggests it's not simple Mendelian behavior. And that's the key here. And that's how you read this chi-squared. So there's something else at play here. So you might have to do further research and analysis. Maybe this isn't a true, this is what you assume that the allele is recessive, but maybe it's not. Uh, maybe there's something else going on. Maybe there's epistasis going on and something, other things we're gonna talk about later in the semester. But that's all I have for this one here. Now, another thing I didn't talk about and I wanna uh, go over it briefly would be, what if this was a, a dihybrid cross? I know the two examples here were, you know, monohybrid crosses and not necessarily crazy difficult. I just wanted to show you what happens when a chi-squared matches expected and didn't match expected. So what what if I, you know, did, you know, a cross where there were two um so a dihybrid heterozygotic cross. So like this. So you do that cross, what ratio do you get? 9 3 3 1 is your ratio from that cross. So how do you use that in terms of chi-squared analysis? So you use these as proportions. So you have to convert these to fractions. So that's 3 16th, well, I mean, uh, 9 16th. Remember, this is out of 16. This is 16 square Punnett square. And then this one is 3 16th, 3 16th, and then 1 16th. So those are your fractions. So then if you have, um, say, 1,000 equal to N, you have to calculate for each of these. So you take you know, 9 sixteenth times a thousand, uh, three sixteenth times a thousand, and so forth. I'm not gonna do all those calculations here, but you do it for each of these. Then when you do your chi-squared analysis, you're gonna have, you know, four of them. Here we've only had, you know, two because of the three to one ratio, but here there are four things. So you have to do that chi-squared equation for each one of these. Um, so you would have four in the summation. You'd Then for degrees of freedom, the degrees of freedom, remember, is equal to the number of outcomes, four minus one. So that equals three. 
So then when you read this chi squared, let's say we got a chi squared of, you know, 4.6, just making it up. Um, so we go down here, degrees of freedom of three, 4.6, we're in this range. So a 10 to 50% chance that that difference was due to random chance. So that suggests that it could be simple Mendelian inheritance. Again, just making up that example on the spot, just understand that how you might get different degrees of freedom compared to what we talked about in this lecture. All right, I just wanted to uh, mention that at the end because you don't want to forget also how to do um, the dihybrid cross, which you could see come up. Uh, just remember three summations and then also degrees of freedom are also different for those two. All right, that is now all I have for today. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. But if not, good luck on these example problems, and I hope they are helpful to you, and I'll see you all next time. All right, bye-bye.